Hi everyone, welcome back to the video. So in this video, we're going to be starting with Ohm's Law now. So let's get straight into it. So again, like I, like I mentioned previously, I'm not teaching Ohm's Law, I'm just revising it. So there are going to be some things in these video series that I'm going to be skipping over. So apologies if I do. If you if you do if you are still struggling with it, leave a question below or obviously give it a Google and watch another video. But yeah, so just gonna go through and revise. So let's go through first the definition of Ohm's law, which is that uh, so Ohm's law states that the current flowing in a circuit right is directly proportional to the applied voltage and well okay wait. so usually the law continues from there. If you just pause for one second here. So the current flowing in the circuit is directly proportional to applied voltage, right? And then so it continues by saying, and is inversely proportional to the resistance, right? Providing, and this is the last part really, providing the temperature remains constant. So at this level, um, you know, first year electrical engineering or you know, even second year electrical engineering. When you when you're talking about like just analyzing circuits, you can kind of just forget this part. Don't worry about this part too much. The thing to remember here is that the current flowing in the circuit is directly proportional to the voltage, right? And it's inversely proportional to the resistance. So let's go through that a little bit more. So let's say we've got here a wire, we've got a resistor, right? So this is the resistor R, right? And then we've got a voltage, which goes across that resistor. And we've got a current I, which flows through the resistor, right? So voltage across the resistor, current flowing through the, the value of the resistor. So Ohm's law is, in this instance, voltage is equal to the current times the resistance, right? So keeping on this, just to explain it. So looking at this example, so voltage across the resistor, so the voltage across this resistor is equal to the current going through the resistor multiplied by the resistor's resistance, okay? So that is V is equal to I R, I times R, okay? So the current going through the resistor here is equal to the voltage across it divided by the resistance of the resistor. So the current is equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistor's resistance. Okay. And finally, the value of the resistor can be found, meaning the resistance of the resistor can be found by taking the voltage across it, take that voltage and divide it by the current that flows through the resistor, right? So these are the three equations that you need to, you should know and be comfortable with. V equals I R, I equals V divided by R, and R is equal to V divided by I. You, when you look at this, the way that I always look at it is in terms of algebra. When you look at it in terms of algebra, V equals I R, right? And then if you divided both sides by R, that would give you V divided by R is equal to I. And if you take V equals I R again, and this time you divide both sides by I, that would give you V divided by I is equal to R. And this is exactly what we wrote up here as well. R is equal to V divided by I, and I is equal to V divided by R. So it's just algebra manipulation basically, right? So let's do an example. What we'll do is we'll find, let's do a resistance example. So let's take a circuit. We've got a battery here, and then we've got a resistor, and back into the battery. So we'll call this R1. We're gonna find the resistance value, right? So let's say we've got 10 volts of, um, 10 vo a 10 volt battery, and let's say we've got a current flowing through the resistor of 0 0.5 amps. So remember what's, to find a res resistance, R is equal to V divided by I, remember, up here. So what we do is we take the voltage, 10, and we divide that by I, which is 0 0.5. Let's get our calculator up. 10 divided by 0 0.5, and that gives you a 20 ohm resistor, right? So that means that R1 is equal to 20 ohms. Cool. All right, let's do another one now. Let's do current. <laughs> so in terms of current, uh, let's take another voltage. Let's do, we'll do six volts this time, all right? And then we've got a resistor, 
Okay, so let's get the resistor 1.2 ohms, uh, 6 volt battery. So we want to know what's the current that flows, you know, out this battery through the resistor and background. What's that current, right? So how do we do it? We'd say we want to find I. So we want to find I and we're taking I is equal to V divided by R, remember? Up here, I is equal to V divided by R. So that means we're taking six volts and we're dividing it by 1.2. So I is then equal to six divided by 1.2, which is equal to five. All right, six divided by 1.2, yeah, five. So that tells us that we have five amps flowing through this circuit. Okay, last one, let's do voltage. So we want to find the voltage. So let's take, we've got some battery. We, don't, we want to find what voltage it is. All right, and then we've got a resistor again. Let's give this resistor 600 ohm value. And let's say we've got three, let's go with milliamps this time. We've got three milliamps flowing through this circuit. So we want to find the voltage. To find the voltage, what we do is we take I and multiply it by R. So V equals I R. So that means that V is equal to three milliamps times 600. The one thing to bear in mind here is that it's milliamps, right? So let's do, obviously three times 600 would be V is equal to 1,800, right? Well, obviously V is not equal to 1,800 volts. It's going to be, it's since we're dealing with milliamps, we're going to divide this by 1,000. So 1.8 volts. If you didn't get that, don't worry, I'll, I'll pull up a chart at the end of this video if I remember to go through SI units because you're going to want to be very comfortable with SI units. Cool. Yeah, so that's it. We found the voltage, found the current, and found the resistance. Okay, so to wrap up Ohm's Law, the one thing that really helps me, or helped me, I'm kind of comfortable with it now, is if you take the something called, take the Ohm's Law triangle, right? So we just call it Ohm's Law triangle. If you studied physics, I mean, usually physics, they give you all these triangles to help you remember equations. So you've got V, and then I, and then R. And then all you do is you basically, let me, um, let me make, so if you draw it and then if you draw this triangle and then cover anything with your finger, because you guys can't see my finger, that's why I'm, imagine this square here is my finger. Whatever you want to find, you just cover it, right? And then that tells you that V divided by I is equal to R. Again, cover V. If you wanted to find V, V is equal to IR. Cover I, and then you got V divided by R is equal to I. And so the Ohm's Law Triangle is a nice way, physics has a lot of these triangles, so yeah, the Ohm's Law Triangle is a nice way that you can remember what is what, so yeah, okay. So lastly then, let's wrap this video up with some SI units. If you're not comfortable with it, again, keep it at Google, but the SI units that you're definitely going to need to know for your first year in electrical engineering, you want to be very comfortable with are, let's say you got M, you got K, M, low, lower M, and then you got this dodgy u so these four are probably the main ones that you want to be comfortable with you probably already intuitive know some of them you just gotten used to it but let's go through it so the capital m is for mega the k you should know is for kilo the small m is for milli and the u the dodgy u is for micro okay so what do these numbers mean mega is whatever it is um whatever value you want times 10 to the power of six Kilo is times 10 to the power of 3. All right, milli is divided by divided by 10 to the power of 3, or actually probably a better way to look at it is 10 to the power of minus 3. So you're just multiplying, right? And then it's micro is times 10 to the power of minus 6. So if you think about the fact that in kind of more simple terms, here you're multiplying by 1 million, right? Here you're multiplying by 1,000. Here you divide, you divide by 1,000, and here you divide by 1 million. So these are these are the four kind of SI units that you want to be comfortable with. There are more, but you'll see them. Let me give you an example of each one, actually. So in terms of mega, we've got, you'd, you'd see, for example, often 2 mega ohms, for example. Or you might see, um, in terms of kilo, you might get 10 kilovolts. Right, which is so two mega ohms is two million ohms, ten kilovolts is ten thousand volts, then milli as we saw previously. So for the lowercase m, you'll probably see oh, this often two milliamps, 
apologies, two milliamps. Two milliamps is 0 0.002 amps. So you might see, for example, 50 micro volts. And so then that would just be 50 divided by 1 million, right? Which is equal to, let's get this right, 0 0.00005. Four zeros, five. So then that's 0 0.00005 volts. Yeah. So that's an example of it. So yeah. So that's Ohm's Law. It's, it's fairly straightforward, to be honest with you. It just gets a little bit complicated sometimes when you have to combine some resistors, which I think I'll actually I'll, I'll touch on in, in the next video how to combine resistors. But yeah, the main thing to remember is if you keep this Ohm's Law triangle in mind, V equals IR, R is equal to V divided by I, and I is equal to V divided by R. So that's it. Cool, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.